What is going on everybody? Welcome to another Raspberry Pi tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be covering how to remote access the desktop so you won't have to have a dedicated monitor yet you're not required to use something like SSH if you're not yet comfortable with it. I will just say like a lot of things with this Raspberry Pi it, this is kind of like a transition into getting used to using a lot of these uh, tools instead so this is kind of a way to remote access yet not really uh, have a monitor and all that but eventually you should really learn SSH and how to you know use SSH um, it's a good skill to have if you ever plan on having um, uh, like running a website on like a VPS or some sort of web server uh, it's just it's just a good idea to get used to and comfortable with using SSH but um, for now that that's probably for a later tutorial. We did cover some of the stuff I believe in earlier tutorials, but maybe eventually I'll do like a full SSH um, tutorial, especially like connecting to your Pi. So with that, um, and probably it'll go along with uh, the web server tutorial. I'll probably expand on those eventually. However, this tutorial will probably be the last software only tutorial with the Pi for at least a little bit. I'm going to be getting into the hardware and electronics uh, stuff in the next few tutorials. Uh, the, you know, the Pi can act like a server and all this kind of fun stuff, and you can do some cool software stuff, but really what gets even more cool is the electronics and hardware uh, portion of it. And I believe that's uh, one of the reasons the makers of Pi made Pi, you know get people excited and interested in the electronics aspect. Also another interesting thing that I'll probably do once I get a little bit more money and can buy a few more pies is you can learn a lot about supercomputing and uh, networking with the Raspberry Pi and it's a lot cheaper than the normal route which is to buy a bunch of computers. So pretty cool stuff in the future. The Raspberry Pi is a pretty awesome machine. But for now, let's talk up about uh, remote desktop. Another reason you might want to be re or do remote desktop is in case you want to be one of those cool cats that does Raspberry Pi tutorials. This is a good way to do it. You remote desktop in, and then you can use your desk, your your main computer's screen recorder, and record the screen, and you can you know get a decent frames per second out of it, and uh, all that. So with that, let's go ahead and hop right on in uh, to get uh, what we're going to use. Um, XDRP. Um, the reason we're going to use this is it's, or I'm sorry, it's XRDP. Uh, the reason we're going to use this is it's pretty lightweight remote connection, right? Um, there is, you could um, get the source for TeamViewer probably and put TeamViewer up here, uh, but uh, that would just, I mean, the resources that TeamViewer takes is pretty high. So, Anyway, we're going to use this besides, um, you know, we're just, we're making a LAN connection. So we don't really need a whole lot of uh, power to transfer. So open up your terminal. Longest intro ever, by the way. So open up your terminal. And let me go ahead and make this slightly bigger so everybody can see it. Monospace. I can't remember what I used to do. I think it was 16, though. I think we went with Big Boy 16. Okay, that's good enough. So now, if uh, to actually get um, XRDP, what you're going to want to type in is sudo apt-get install XRDP. Now, uh, and then hit enter. Now, I've already installed it, so it's going to be like, huh, idiot, you actually have this apt-get. No, nope, it's apt-get. Anyway, it's going to tell me that I already have it, but for you, it should actually install it for you. Um, so, yes, it says I already have it, and it's the newest version. Um, so anyway, but for you, you should be running through it and install at the moment. So while it's installing, um, I guess pause the video because now I'm going to be showing you the next few steps. So pause it, and then whenever uh, it's done installing, resume. Alrighty, welcome back. Hopefully you got your uh, stuff installed now. The next thing we want to do is get our local IP address because that's what we're going to use to connect. So to do that, um, you just need, it's kind of like IP config from a Windows machine. And um, but here it is. I, oops, type in here. If config. So not ip config. If config. If someone knows why it's if if config. Feel free to uh, post it below. I'm kind of curious. So anyway, you'll hit enter, 
and you'll get all your IP addresses, you'll get your broadcast, your mask, and finally right here is where what you're going to be mainly looking for, and that is your um, local IP address. So, um, now that we see that, it is a 12 for me, since it's my 12th computer. But continuing on, once you have uh, that information, uh, the next thing we'll want to do is on your Windows machine, you have remote desktop. So, go over here and you want to type in, uh, just type in remote, that'll probably take you there. And right here, you've got remote desktop connection. So, go ahead and hit that. And here we go. I've already done it a few times. I'm connected at the moment. So uh, my IP is already in there. But yeah, you'll just take that local IP right there, slap it on in there. And if you want, the other thing you can do, sometimes like the display is a little funkadelic. And so the way to get around that is go to your options, display, and you can choose like what uh, display you want to have. I believe it comes normal, like at least when I did it, my display was m massive. It was bigger than my. It was bigger than 1920 by 1080. Like I have a 1920 by 1080 monitor, and when I connected in, it was like it was just huge. <laughs> so, anyway, just keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing I'll just mention is uh, the way it works. Even though you're logging, like when you hit connect, it's going to ask you for your login information, and so that's going to be your you know your login information for your your Pi. So if you haven't changed your password. That means username is Pi, password is Raspberry. However, if you change your password like we did, we changed our password in the, um, the web server tutorial. So if you followed that web server tutorial and did change your password, you know whatever your password was, uh, put that in there. And then you'll connect and it'll take you right here. Um, so the next thing I just want to mention is if you, the way it works, even though yeah, you've got like a user account, and like if you're from a Windows machine, when you log into your user account, well, you, you log into your user account, right? So everything you do if someone else was on that user account, I mean, well, it just wouldn't even happen. It'd be like, this user's already logged in. But you, in theory, if you remote desktoped your own Windows machine, you would be sharing that desktop. So if you move the mouse on one computer, it would move the mouse on the other computer. It's not the case on a Linux system. So for example, what I'm gonna do is to show you like down here this is your little process monitor and as you can see we're, we're not doing anything so it's it's well relatively low and stable but let me show you I'm gonna go to my main because I do have a dedicated monitor for my uh, Pi so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna open up some stuff on my Pi and you should see the pro I'm just like clicking around on the desktop and you can already see the process is going up but anyway uh, you should see it you know skyrocket like it normally does so I opened up a few idols and uh, so as you can see, we didn't do anything over here, but yet the processes for this specific, you know, one went up and you didn't see me doing anything, right? Like we're not actually opening anything. And you might be like, hi, oh, you're an idiot because this has like two desktops, right? Because you can look here, like this is your main t desktop. You can switch to desktop two, so to speak. It's still not here, right? I have three idols open, but we're not seeing them. So anyway, just kind of an aside, like you can't share the desktop with this. Um, there might be a way you can do it, I just don't know it. So anyway, that's going to conclude uh, the sharing, or the remote desktops. <laughs> just got done saying we can't share the desktop. Anyway, that's going to conclude uh, the uh, remote desktop tutorial. Stay tuned for my uh, hardware and electronics tutorials. I've been pretty busy lately, but I'm pretty excited to put those out. It's a lot of fun stuff. Maybe eventually I see a lot of tutorials on, uh, or not tutorials, I see a lot of videos on YouTube, people building like robots and stuff with their Raspberry Pi, but they're not, they don't, they don't get, tell you like how they did it, they just show you it, like, hey, cool, check this out. And nobody actually has like a tutorial on how to do it, probably because it's a whole lot of information. So maybe that's why, but I, I might try and tackle that. So anyway, as always, thank you for watching, thanks for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.